Welcome to my channel, everyone, The Life of Nina. Um, I wanted to just share today one of my most precious memories of Christmas time. I remember being, I think I must have been 11 or 12, and my dad used to love to hunt um, anything. He, I mean, he never wasted it. He wasn't just for sport, but um, he would hunt for rabbit and squirrel and um, deer and coon. Well, that year, um, the coon skins were going for a very high price. I don't remember exactly, but I know that they were um, going for a lot of money for each one. Well, nowadays, they, they don't. They, you don't hardly get anything out of them. But um, Dad was the only one that worked, and, you know, they had it financially hard, even though us kids never knew that. They never complained, and, and they took care of the bills and never involved us kids in it. So we had no, no reason to worry or anything about, you know, the financial status of the family even though we felt like we were rich. We had a nice clean home and always have food on the table and uh, had loving parents. So I always felt very, very blessed in my life. And I still do. Um, but I wanted to say that when dad was 16, he got shot in the leg by his own dad. Um, it was an accident. They were out rabbit hunting. And I don't know what happened if grandpa was trying to uh, have dad um, scare out some rabbits from behind a bush or what. But anyway, unfortunately, my dad got his one leg shot up really bad. He spent um, over 130 days in isolation in the hospital. And they kept wanting to cut his leg off and dad wouldn't allow him to. He said, you know, he was a young man and he didn't want to be without his leg. So they tried and, and they did everything they could for him. He was able to walk. The, the thing is, Dad would have to walk. He actually walked like on his toes and um, never complained, though. He never, ever complained because he felt fortunate that he was able to keep his leg. So he didn't feel like he had the right to complain. But he worked every single day on concrete floors. He worked at a, um, a place that made boxes, and they did everything out of uh, corrugated um, cardboard. So... He, you know, he was on his feet a lot, and his leg, I never knew this, of course, I didn't see it until I got older, but uh, it was nothing but a bone with skin over it and a little bit of muscle, and he carried those shots in his leg, which is, you know, if you shoot uh, with rabbit, a rabbit gun, rabbit shot, they're just little pellets, and um, they spread, like, over top of it, and before you fix the rabbit to eat it, you've got to pick out those little um, shots. So, um... Dad carried those in his leg, and they would get on his on the nerve of his leg, and it would hurt. And once again, he never complained. So um, this year that I'm talking about for Christmas, I guess financially, money was hard. And um, I remember the garage being totally packed with, um, well, I shouldn't say packed. The whole floor of the garage and everything like the, the workstations and all that, they were all covered with um, coonskins. The entire thing, it looked like a carpet of coonskins when you went out there. Now, yes, I am an animal lover, always have been. And yes, I cried many, many times over the things that dad would hunt. And um, still to this day, I, I hate to see it. But to, you know, feed your family, you do what you have to do and to provide for your family. Um, so I realized a long time ago that, you know, God placed those things in, out in nature for us to use in the right way. But um, Dad has a picture, or we have a picture here somewhere of all those coon skins. And Dad sold those and got, and, and along with that, he, um, he hunted a ginseng all through the season, you know, when you're allowed. And, or when it's available, I should say. And um, he had dried out a bunch of that ginseng. So with the ginseng back then and with the, um, the coon hides, we, we ended up having a great Christmas. And I'm not talking about just materialistic things. We had um, a huge dinner and invited lots of people. We had um, Christmas presents under the tree. I remember getting, uh, it was the first year that I had gotten presents for um, for a teenager, I guess you could say. I didn't even get any type of toy that year, and that was a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> but um, 
No, I think I did get it. I think that's the year dad got me a little beagle stuffed animal. And I had that thing for years and years. I don't know what happened to it. But I did get a, um, a really pretty pink gown and house coat and house shoes and powders and perfume and, and all. I guess mom must have been trying to give me a hint. I was such a tomboy. She was probably trying to give me a hint back then to... Um, you know, that it was time for me to become a little lady or, or something. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was a um, very, very precious memory of mine. And we had such a great holiday season that year. I think what I, what I really wanted to say is it seems like Christmas is a past. People didn't go out and, and charge and spend a ton of money. They either made something or they crafted, you know, something, same thing I'm apparently, or out of wood or whatever, and, or they, um, they thought a lot about what the person would want and need, and they, you know, they were on extremely tight budget, so if you got something that you had always wanted, then you knew that it was uh, special, that your parents saved a long time for it, so I think sometimes we need to do that again. We need to go back to those old-time Christmases and make memories you know, how many, really, how many presents in your lifetime do you remember? And yeah, maybe if they were something big that you got, if you guys are wealthy and had the money, excuse me, my nose is itching. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't think it takes a lot of money. I don't think it takes a lot of um, all the extra specialty things that people feel like they have to have nowadays. I really don't think it does. Uh, the Christmases I remember the most are when family was together and the memories of all of us just laughing and playing games and, and eating. Um, mom always, and she still does to this day, instead of stockings, mom always had all of our treats and stuff inside of a little brown lunch bag. And she would fold over the top and write our names on the top of it. And in our bags, we would have like an apple, an orange, a banana, some nuts, um, some hard candy, candy cane, and then usually a candy bar or something. Sometimes if she's seen little um, different things that you could play with, like a set of jacks or whatever, she would throw that in the bag. But those things were special. And I don't know if I just appreciate things like that so much. I think I always have. I think I've always appreciated the time and the thought that people have put into anything that I've been given. And I guess that's probably why, you know, we weren't spoiled. We were blessed. We were happy. We felt like we had everything we needed. And I guess that's what made me who I am today. So instead of going out and, and charging something that you're going to have to be paying for, for, you know, six months or a year, I, I just don't believe in doing that. Um, it's okay if you do that. That's your, you know, that's your business, not mine. But it's just something that I would never do. Um, I just want to give what I can and what they enjoy. I've got my grandson's stuff bought and my son and my daughter-in-law. And just from knowing them, I know what they like. And I, I, I really believe that they'll enjoy what we got them. Um, and we didn't spend a ton of money. So I guess the whole thing narrows down to it's the reason for the season. And maybe that's what I focus on the most is the reason. And the reason that I celebrate Christmas is the birth of Christ. Yeah, we know he wasn't born December 25th, probably in sometime in September, they think. But it's the celebration of his birth that we celebrate for and we give gifts to each other for. So let's let's try to put that in the in our minds and that we can look back on and say, you know, let's make Christmas um, something to remember, not just about gift giving. Um, I love the old fashioned Christmases. Now, my family, uh, what we do, we all get together at my niece's house and there's a bunch of us, <laughs> quite a few of us, and some of them can't make it, but I'm telling you, I would love to have every one of my family members there this year, but if they don't, we just rally around, and we just have a good time, and 
So what we do is, instead of drawing names and all that, we have, and I don't even know the, game, the name of this, but everybody brings a gift that is um, $10. And you wrap it. Like, I would bring a lady's gift. My husband would bring a, a man's gift or a boy, you know, and a $10 gift. So you um, all, everyone that's there gets a number. So say like if my number is 27 and somebody else is three, that person goes first. But when it's my turn to go and I like their gift, I can go over and take their gift. And that gift can be taken and received three times and that's it. The third person that gets it, doesn't matter if it was the first one that had it to begin with, um, they get to keep that gift. So that's how the game goes. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a white elephant gift or I don't really know. But we all have such a wonderful time and we end up giving whoever wanted it, the gift anyway. Um, it's just fun. And then we have the children. The, the I think they're like children under maybe 10 or something like that. They all bring gifts. Um, they draw names because there's not a, as many of them that can come. So that's what they do. They draw names. But Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little Christmas stories, and um, I hope that you guys are not getting in debt. Um, I hope that you are enjoying, like, I just was outside a little bit ago. Mom left to go to church, and it's been snowing all day, but it's not been a super heavy snow, so we got like an inch and a half, and everything's covered, and everything is beautiful and smells fresh, and I just stood out on the porch for a little bit, and Willow was out with me, my dog. And we just kind of looked around and I wanted to videotape, but it was already getting dark. And the pine trees the neighbors have were just, you know how it covers just the tips of them? It was like a postcard. It was beautiful. So go out and enjoy whatever your weather is, you know, for, at Christmas time. Or light your tree and bake some cookies. Or light your fireplace and listen to some Christmas music. Just do whatever you can to get your mind in the right place that you are with loved ones and that is the most precious gift. So have fun everyone. Get out there if you got shopping left to do, which I do. I have quite quite a bit of shopping left to do really. Haven't bought my husband anything yet. Um, but get out there and just enjoy and be kind to people. And, and if people are kind of pushy and they're in a bad mood, maybe they couldn't find what they wanted, just smile at them. Give them a smile. Maybe that's all it takes. Just be kind and be good. Be good to people. And I guarantee you that you're going to have someone do that for you on a day that you feel rushed and um, just out of sorts. So I just want to say God bless you all. I hope you have a great, great evening. And because of this Vlogmas, I will see you tomorrow. This is day six, December the 6th. And I'm enjoying this. I hope that you guys are too. Um, I'm not going to cook tonight or tomorrow because my husband made a huge thing of chili which is perfect for today so we have lots left over for tomorrow so I won't be doing any cooking for you guys but but maybe I can this weekend um, Saturday or Sunday have a have a meal planned out or you know I don't know I'll, I've got some great ideas I hope they're okay but today I just kind of wanted to take it easy sit in a rocking chair tell you some memories and wish you all a blessed blessed evening and a Merry Christmas Hi, right, bye-bye.